Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today our subject matter is a Skoda Kodiak. She's a 2019 car. And what our job is today, if we can see, is we are replacing a DPF. Someone has cut the actual, the guts out of it. You can see the square here that has been cut out of it. We're going to change it and get it out. From underneath, they can be kind of tight enough. Stuck up in here at the back of the engine. I have the cooler off here. That's in another video. But it's the DPF removal that we are going after now. These can be quite expensive. And at this point in time, what is it? That's uh, around the end of February 2022. And these are not available. So the price of it didn't really matter on this occasion. It was a case that it could not be got. So this is off of a two, another 2019 uh, Kodiak. And what we've got, I guess, look kind of bits of pipes, bit of a pressure sensor, add blue injector there. If anyone hasn't seen an add blue injector before, sprays add blue in here. Into the car. What has actually happened on this vehicle, if anyone follows me, they'll see it on the other video. Um, but I believe in here the add blue had been getting injected in here. That's where the engine is. The exhaust gas has come out here through the oxidization catalyst, catalyst uh, down, and then it should go through the particulate filter, which catches all the exhaust particulates and off then and out the back of the car. But what I believe is happening is add blue is being injected in there. It's coming down. It's not hitting this piece, particulate filter, and when the EGR valve opens. The add blue particulates go in and into the cooler and they were blocking the cooler on us, okay? This is what my, maybe I'll show you. The cooler, here's actually a new cooler that I'm, I'm putting in another video. This is crystallized, crystallized add blue I am calling it, that has just caked up in here and block the whole cooler, if that makes sense. So that's why we're swapping around this. The cooler itself from this side is blocked. And I believe it's kind of slightly upgraded at this point. But anyway, far now, our task is to get this yoke up and in here. So here we go, plan. I think I'm going to drop the subframe down to gain a bit of room on other cars similar in engine. Uh, I have done the same thing, got the subframe out of it just to give me room and I'm going to get the drive shaft that sits across there and over here out of it also. At that point in time, I have fairly good access and we'll see where we go from there. I'm going to unbolt, first thing I'm going to do is unbolt the exhaust and maybe these two bolts here off the exhaust just to get it back and out of our way and then the mighty tackle not a mighty tackle, but a fast, I call it a power tool, and I'm going to just go bang, 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 wrap out a couple of bolts here quite fast and get the subframe down and out of our way. I'm going to leave the steering rack up here, so the rack itself is going to stay here. I'm not touching any hydraulic or electrical connections or any of that crack steering geometry I don't want. I just want to get the subframe off it, down off it, and access up here as fast as possible. Okay, let's go. Okay, guys. Um, for me, anyway, transmission jack to hold it just to show a bracket there two 16 volts in it i pull out one of the bolts i leave the other one out to just swing it out of the way that bracket then sits underneath that bolt that bolt has come out i take out this bolt here that's holding the steering rack to the subframe i come up a bit further there's another bolt 
that lives up there in that hole in the middle of the wishbone. I've pulled off three nuts off the bottom ball joint. Exact same on the other side, three nuts. Bolt here holding the steering rack. That bracket, 16 bolt back there. That bracket that was here swung back out of the way. 18 bolt here out. Another one living up again and in there. I have two bolts going from a subframe to gearbox mounting. So two bolts wrapped out of here. I've undone my exhaust. What I'm going to point out is this little bit of wiring. Now I'm bringing my anti-roll bar with me. Oh yes, I have disconnected at this point the nuts off of both anti-roll bar links. While I'm taking it down, I have this wire that's actually clipped in here to the subframe and I have a bit of a wiring harness cut onto this um, water pump that's for the heater, the heater matrix inside in the car. And then I have this aisle level sensor wire. I'm gonna get them off. And one tip I'm gonna to say to you is probably don't get caught on them. Don't, don't drop your subframe without feeding them back in and around the bear. As I said there, I'm bringing the bear down with me just to get more room. And I'm probably nearly hoping, as I said, I haven't got wheels or anything off as of yet. I'm nearly hoping that this thing will come with me now at this point while I'm oh, nearly on camera. Lads have said to me, hey, get a, get a head cam. Probably should. Oh yeah, never thought of that. While I'm sitting here, the whole lot is a little bit wider than my wheel base. So while I still have my wheels on the car. Ah, no, there's no bother. Simple and easy, as he said. Right, we are. Oh, one minute. Don't go tippling and toppling. Well, I should be trying to scope back a little bit. Let you see. Is it going to balance? Oh, she's balancing. And down she goes. Okay, subframe down and out. We'll get a little visual on it now and just see what. Ooh. Yeah, she's she's working. All right, bit more room here at this point in time. Still have to get my drive shaft out of it. Just for ease of access and I would say uh, room for pulling my particulate filter down and out. Do we want to see that? Is that a good shot for lads? For a parent number. Maybe show it to you on the other, other one. But anyway, that's the... It's coming. I've taken one or two bolts out here. I didn't take out this. This was left out of it. Um, I've taken out this bolt. There's a little bolt that sits in here somewhere holding this water pipe that wasn't actually fitted incorrectly either, but neither here, there. It's out of it at this point in time. And there's another one sitting in here for holding the particulate filter itself. I'm going to get this water pipe uh, or pump, whatever it may be, whatever way I decide to do it, out of my way again so I can get room for ease of access. Okay, keep on going. Okay guys, back up top. At this point in time, I'm gonna be pulling off a few block connectors. I'm not going to be, I have. Um, if you're in any doubt, mark, okay? So just put a little paint, pen, mark, whatever you want. You can see I have a mark there. You can see when I'm pulling out a couple of sensors, I have a couple of marks sitting in there. Just mark anything, get them back in as close to OE or original as possible. Just, this is kind of, was kind of messy and I'm taking it out but I'm hoping to put it back in a little bit cleaner and more crisp. I don't like that kind of crack hanging out there, but um, yeah, just be careful when you're taking it apart. So when you're putting it back together, it'll work out okay. I'm gonna undo that bracket here that's holding my particle filter on. I think I have a bolt inside and I'm gonna get this AdBlue injector that I have already taken out of this one that's on the ground here. Um, I'm gonna get that out of it okay. And then we're gonna get this particle filter out of this vehicle. Okay guys, the yeah, blue injector is out of it. There's a little, small little self-tapper bolt that held a bracket on here. It is water-cooled, the injector. So the pipes that are coming out are water pipes, but I'm at undoing them from the side of the timing cover. The other thing I'm looking at now, at this point, is my pressure sensor, which I have a pressure sensor on this one. But what I do note, I'm seeing it from that is there's a little 
bracket sitting at a timing cover here. There's my pressure sensor. Uh, I'm going to take that bracket off or a little bolt out. It lives, if you can see it, uh, just down there. Hopefully that will follow me down when I'm pulling down the particle filter. Fingers crossed. Okay, pull off that. We've bit of room being created now. I'm going to take off that little protective cover for the pressure sensor just here. Have the bracket off it. And what's handy is there's a, a bolt sitting here. I have that bolt taken out of it, okay? Please only just left there. Um, now there's a bolt sitting or buried down at the back. Plenty of room there, but you can't see it. But very ha handy to have the cross reference of the actual, I suppose, what's coming off. You can see it actually sitting in here. So that bottom one was out when we were taking it apart. We have a couple of ones over here disconnected, but that one is sitting there, and that's actually a, a spline key. Now, I didn't, uh, I don't know what size it is there as of yet, but we'll go and figure it out and see that little bolt and handy to have sitting here to be able to see it, all right? Okay, I, I pulled out that bolt that was sitting down the back. It's uh, an M10, just if anyone wants the size. And once that came out, my particle filter just kind of fell nearly out. I'm going to go up in the air and bring it down from below. Okay, getting there. Okay, guys, this thing is out on the ground. Just doing a little bit of a cross compare. Um, right, I'm going to show you. There's the the cut or the weld in greater detail. Someone cut the guts out of it. If you look in, we can see that there is, there's just quite simply nothing in there. Another thing that bothered me are that I copped. I couldn't make head or tail of that, if you can see it there, piece around here. That nearly looked like wire wool or something. It'd be interesting to break the guts out of this thing here now because it is, it is gone, it's banjaxed. What is in there? I don't know. Um, the one thing I, I suppose I will, here, look, just to show you the amount of soot built up on the inside of, of the particular filter. But look in here and look how clean this one is in cross comparison. There is the particle filter that should be in there. Nice, clean tidy and again in a good state of repair um, the bit that I I've seen this on a good few of them but I don't see it in this but then it doesn't look like it was taken out of it so it's funny as to what the cross comparison in but but anyway neither here or there there's gauze in there and in there that I suppose that, that can get blocked but for now I think it's time to try and get this up and into the car and leave this piece on the ground. Um, what was actually happening to this, because some, some guys are going to ask me, it was going into limp mode at about 2,500 RPM um, quite often and I was getting no fall codes whatsoever. So I had no fall codes and yet this thing was just kicking its heels and not doing its job. Um, the EGR cooler that I showed earlier on was what I was chasing after for the problem. I believe that kind of had an overboost problem or issue or whatever you want to call it and it was seeing more turbo boost than what it would normally or wanted to see and I believe that is my call on it that when I was driving under load and around town two and a half thousand rpm if i if i'd feathered the throttle a little bit that my egr valve should open and when the egr valve was open it was going to dissipate some of the boost from the turbo that sit up here but because excuse me there was no flow out through this egr cooler when the egr valve opened without the flow it didn't dissipate the boost and we've just seen a snippet of a millisecond of a boost being too high but no fall codes that's to be shown in the other video maybe if you want to go and have a look at that as well as where i'm going after my diagnosis on this thing okay but it is not this is only an observation it's not about anything to do it uh this being seen i just didn't like it and i wasn't putting it back together with that in it that's the way i was going okay continue on to get this thing into it. and guys sorry just before we carry on 
totally uh, nothing to do with off key altogether on this thing. I want to say a big thank you to this chap. And I'm going to assume that a lot of you would know who he'd be. DJ Sterling Garage Services, Carrick Fergus, with his inverted or backwards Alfa Romeo uh, symbol, I believe. He dropped down to us, brought us down a couple of old, old t-shirts. Not old, new, but t-shirts. Um, called down for a visit, had a chat. Um, I was a little bit giddy when he came in here. He said, what are you up about? We were all kind of all getting excited there and all this kind of crack. But um, he called down. He stayed down in County Waterford for the night, actually in Waterford City itself. We popped in, we had a chat and spent a couple of hours together, myself and Alan from Data Diagnostics that uh, works here with me. And yeah, Dave, just fair play to you for calling down. Thank you very much. An honourable and a sound and... Uh, fantastic kind of guy watch his videos check him out Ye most of my subscribers are probably going to be Dave Sterl fans as well so because Dave gave me a shout out there a couple of moons ago a year or whatever it may be ago um, about these videos but hey Dave Sterl fair play to you thanks for calling down and really really cool to see you down here hopefully I'll pop back up to you maybe some stage and uh, we'll have another chat so big shout out for Dave Sterl and on we go with our with our DPF alright Okay guys, on the way back in, we are going now, but on the way out, I don't know if any of you saw, and I showed, that was kind of sitting out like that. There is these type floating nuts that adjust, okay? When I'm going in, putting in the particle filter, I have all those brought in the way, or at least away from the particle filter. At this point in time then, I'm using that solid point on the bottom and I have, you can't see it from down here, the, the bracket, it's way up, up there, the bracket that's on holding the particle, particle filter to the manifold and I'm using these two points to hold that solid and where it should be. Once that is actually held in that position, then at that point in time, I'm going to put in my bolts in the I'm going to put in is there is too long change it then i'm going to put in my bolts here when i'm tightening the bolts these should nearly spin out of their own accord to touch it the reason it was held away from here was because the bolt that was in here the awkward one had that adjustable flange thing sitting out and it was holding the dpf away from them brackets okay so that bracket and the clamp up top and then the other bits adjust. This is a better visual on one of those floating pin things. So when you're screwing your bolt in clockwise, it should bring that up and tip off of the actual particle filter, okay? I have that tight now at this point in time. And I have the bolt underneath tight, but these things, as I said there, they do float, all right? Allen key fits into it, I just use a screw or whatever. So stand up beside me. On we go. So as you tighten this, it will pull that other piece up against the exhaust more so, okay? Okay. Starting to get bits and pieces back together now. Let's zoom out a bit. Steel pipe up and on. Bolt that was missing out of here actually, still loose. That bracket is in right space or in nut water pipe held in tight, bolt above it. Tight water pump pipes back on uh, getting there the awkward bolt is easier to get from the bottom at this point in time while the subframe is off and while I'm here as well I'm going to try and get this cooler up and maybe in from here very easy to get in plenty of room it's just yeah just thought maybe with, with a bit more room I'll throw it in now before I throw the subframe okay up. guys my subframe is back up my three bolts back in the bottom ball joints on each side bolts in steering rack and then a couple of bolts that we had taken out. Um, sorry. Up there again, back in it, same on the other side. Uh, drive shaft back in, bracket up and back on. Bolts back in our exhaust here, and we can see. She's all sitting up and in there, okay? And in as she should be. All right. 
Guys, I'll show you up the top as well. Okay, guys, up top we have our Ad Blue injector stuck back in. I have my couple of bolts that were being held here from pressure sensor pipes and stuff put back in. Also, sitting around on the top, probably will put another tie up in here, but I, I have tried, someone would probably know maybe about these green tabs and where they actually hook on individually, but for for now, because we're in such a mess or a disarray prior, um, that's the best that I can do. I'm at putting tie clips on the things to try and keep them as nice and clean and tidy as I can. As I said there, I'm probably going to put another one on here. But that's as clean as I can get my wiring after the last lads had made it kind of what I call higgledy-piggledy. Um, that's kind of it for DPF anyway. Removal and refitment. Or, sorry, our oxygen sensors and our NOx sensors and temperature sensors are back in as well. And I've had to spend a couple of hours now up here getting that thing right. So, look, hopefully that's going to help someone and it might give you a bit of guidance for hitting your own uh, DPF removal or replacement. Okay, boys, for EGR cooler, if you want to see more detail on that, you can go back onto the other video. It's better Kodiak as well as my di diagnosis on this thing and what I was trying to find or what I was hunting down when I was going into limp mode. So there's a second part on something else, but just for the lads changing DPF, it might be handy. Uh, a couple of hands and hints, hints and tips and bolts being pointed out and stuff for you, okay? Guys, talk to you next cartoon. Please like, subscribe and... See Peter Kennedy signing out.